the National Library and Information Systems Authority of Trinidad and Tobago was extremely pleased to become part of the Our Collections Matter project of the International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, ICROM. The aims of this project, specifically the acceleration and amplification of sustainable development efforts through the conservation of heritage collections, are of vital significance for this country, as the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, are a policy priority in the National Development Plan or Vision 2030 of Trinidad and Tobago. Since the establishment of the first public library, library services in Trinidad and Tobago have expanded to over 20 public and co-located libraries in the Twin Island Republic. Library services are available in the north, south, east, west and central of both islands. There's a long history of library services in Trinidad and Tobago. Three separate library bodies formed what is now known as the National Library and Information Systems Authority, or NALIS. The mandate of NALIS is closely tied to the preservation of culture and heritage. This is clearly spelled out in the NALIS Act of 1998. In a preservation assessment in 2005, the importance of policies and practices for analysis mission of preservation was strongly emphasized. The Heritage Library Division aspires to manage the national cultural heritage of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Heritage Library Division directly enacts the preservation mandate of NALIS. The primary function of the Heritage Library Division, HLD, is the collection, preservation, and exploitation of all material created by or about nationals of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. HLD's emphasis is sustainability preserving the tangible culture of our nation for the benefit of future generations. HLD acquires a wide range of information on or by nationals of Trinidad and Tobago in a variety of formats. This includes everything from monographs to letters to postcards and stamps. There is also a diverse collection of audiovisual material. The public is engaged in various ways. Heritage Library Division navigates a delicate balance between facilitating public use and ensuring preservation for posterity. Thematic exhibitions are mounted frequently. However, outreach also extends far beyond the walls of Heritage Library Division. The Rare Books Room is the cultural treasure chest of Nalis. The contents include materials such as glass, cloth, feathers, rubber, wood, metals, and much more. The special features of the Rare Books Room ensure the preservation of its contents. Primary and secondary school students, university students, and researchers of all ages are able to book visits and view resources while participating in workshops and tours. These tours offer the opportunities to view items from the Rare Books Room. 
interns, foreign dignitaries, and authors are just a few of the categories of persons who are fascinated by the contents of the rare books room. These collections offer a rare glimpse into the past. Visitors of numerous nationalities are also engaged. The provision of training is another function, function of the Special Collections and Rare Books Unit. The collections hold everything from photographs to coins to maps to records. The scope of the collections is broad. These are just a few of our special collections. The unique collections of the Rare Books Room particularly inspire the Special Collections and Rare Books team on the Journey to Our Collections Matter field project because they speak to the rich legacy of our country, Trinidad and Tobago. Some of these collectors played extremely significant roles in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. For example, Baron Larry Constantine. The Constantine Collection is the largest in the Special Collections and Rare Books room. These collections hold unique content of critical importance to researchers. The iconic costume designs of Wayne Berkeley are a cultural treasure since carnival is a key aspect of the heritage of Trinidad and Tobago. Special Collections and Rare Books Historic Map Collection was featured in the media. Some of these maps cannot be accessed anywhere else. Key documents that shaped the history of Trinidad and Tobago can be located in the Rare Books room. One example is the cedula of population, which had a tremendous impact on our society. Nevertheless, there's also a great deal of contemporary memorabilia. There are some iconic photographs as well. The postcard collections can be a surprisingly rich source of information and images. The special collections are constantly expanding. This collection, presently being received, belongs to a pioneer of Trinidadian theater and public service, Errol Jones. The United Nations Sustainable Goals are profoundly relevant to the work of the Special Collections and Rare Books Unit. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has signed on to the UN SDGs and as such, they are linked to Nalys's strategic agenda. I wanted to learn how I could help to ensure inclusivity in collecting and disseminating information and in this way make some level of contribution to the advancement of the sustainable development agenda. Participating in this program dramatically reinforced the power of collections-based organizations to advance Agenda 2030 and make a profound impact towards sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago. It was inspiring to learn about diverse types of collections and field projects around the world. What was particularly useful was learning how the OCM toolkit could be used to make an impact on various sustainable goals in unique ways. Our policy project emphasized the fact that policy creation is a team effort. For the Special Collections and Rare Books Unit, it is essential to balance facilitating public use with, key, with the key aspect of preservation and conservation. There are a number of SDG targets that could be applicable, but these were narrowed down to the most strongly relevant. The top three are 11.4, 16B, and 16.10. 11.4, protecting the world's cultural and national heritage, deals specifically with preparing policies for the safe use of collections.
Aside from becoming immersed in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2030, there are numerous internal documents to be consulted to ensure alignment of the policy. The challenges that emerged along the way presented wonderful learning opportunities. The Special Collections and Rare Books team does not work in isolation. Collections are treated at the Preservation and Conservation Lab, utilized by the Reference and Research Unit to fulfill queries, and are showcased in outreach activities. The new policy has implications for all units. Through ICROM, we were sensitized to an abundance of useful tools. Two tools in particular were key for conceptualizing the project. Through these tools, I learned more about the five Ps, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. We learned that creation of a policy is a detailed process with a number of steps. The way forward involves the creation of a clear and comprehensive policy document that would govern access to special collection and rare books for both internal and external users, as well as collaboration with partners. It was inspiring to gain greater appreciation for the role of our collections and how they can be used to educate others on the importance of protecting heritage. OCM has concretized for me the importance of demonstrating the contribution of libraries to the United Nations Sustainable Goals, particularly in the areas of data collection, community engagement, access, and advocacy. By participating in OCM, including the presentations, the OCM lounge breakout rooms, and quiz activities, I learned how the OCM toolkit could be utilized to show the potential of collections-based organizations to make a significant impact on sustainable development goals in unique ways. It was illuminating to learn about diverse field projects on varied types of collections. Participating in our collections matter has equipped me with transferable skills. I now work at a national heritage site the Police Academy of Trinidad and Tobago, the oldest public institution in my country. The understanding that I have acquired from the OCM experience is now more valuable than ever. The knowledge that I have gained infuses every proposal I draft and every policy process that I participate in. As a librarian, I was so inspired to learn about the exciting projects that other professionals were engaged in. I am extremely grateful to ICROM for this opportunity, and I thank all my fellow participants for making this experience such a rich and rewarding one. And I wish you all continued success in your projects and all other endeavors. Thank you so much for your attention. It has been a pleasure sharing my experience with the International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property. I hope that you are all as excited as I am for what the future holds.